Olá, bem-vindos ao Kids Save Lives Brasil para o World Restart a Heart. Hoje nós teremos o Dr. Federico Semeraro, que é consultor de anestesia e terapia intensiva do Hospital Maggiore, que fica na Bolonha, Itália, e ele vai falar sobre tecnologia inovativa para crianças e parada cardiorrespiratória e alguns aspectos da Covid-19 é, para as pessoas cidadãs que estão é, agindo na parada cardiorrespiratória. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Semeraro. Uh, please, uh, we are very much uh, uh, grateful for your participation in this live. Thank you. Hello to everybody. Hi, Naomi. It's uh, good morning to everybody. It's uh, a real pleasure to be with you virtually. Uh, I'm so happy to spend the next hour together. Uh, obviously, from Italy to Brazil, virtually, it's much easier that, uh, to arrive with the, this nice call. Uh, I am Federico Semeraro. I'm, yes, I'm a consultant in anesthesia intensive care from Majoria Hospital. Um, I'll talk about several things. I share my, I share my slides and we talk together about some new, very interesting things. Can you show my slides? Yes. Okay. So, innovative, innovative technology applied in CPR for kids and COVID-19 aspect of CPR by lay people. My conflict or interest, uh, I'm involved in uh, ILCOR, uh, ERC and IRC, but mainly uh, my big conflict or interest, I'm Star Wars, Star Trek, and Back to the Future Addictor, sorry for that. So, as usual, this presentation is dedicated to, to the next generation. Viola was born 4th of February, uh, received her first photo with iPhone, and slept with music from YouTube, and 18 of August received Earth's first augmented reality experience. Uh, this is really dedicated to the next generation. So, back in time, first of all, I want to say nothing is impossible. Uh, this is my first take home message for you. Uh, everything is theoretically impossible until it is done. On the left, a very old hard drive on the right, uh, actually uh, 128 gigabytes pen drive in 2017. Again, the bionic man, you remember the $6 million man from 1974 to 2013, a real exoskeleton technology. Again, in 94, Mark Twain, wrote a short story about the telectroscope. Uh, in his story, the telectroscope would create a network of worldwide information sharing. He was describing the internet over a century ago and in 1989, Tim Berners-Lee created World Wide Web. So again, graphic user interface in 2002, minority report show uh, an advanced version of graphic user interface. Tom Cruise could manipulate data using movement and gesture. Today, we have touch screen devices uh, and use gesture for everything. And this is a uh, motion leap from 2010 reality. This time, Star Trek in 1966 show a cell phone. And now it's common to use a cell phone like the old, very fashion Motorola. And again, show tablet and wearable device as a pad that became a pad. Again, my preferite, my favorite. So, Tricode 1966 uh, became a reality with this nice uh, Scanadu Scout that measure several parameter for uh, a patient. So, we can say that Star Trek predicting the future since uh, 1966. So, this is uh, my Captain Log Part 1. I'll talk about, uh, don't worry, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in one hour. I'll talk about learning style, next generation, Kids Save Life, Viva Campaign, European Restart Art Day, World Restart Art Relief, a breathtaking picnic of virtual reality. So, 
as you know, every generation learns skill and knowledge in different way. I'm old, I'm part of a generation X. We need to understand how is learning style for the next generation. The next generation is familiar with technology. They are absolutely technologic. They are as Alice in Wonderland. They love collaboration. They love telephone mobile and social networks. So really there is a lot of science about CPR school training, but maybe we need to learn how to teach the next generation. As Italian Resuscitation Council, as European Resuscitation Council, I'll tell you our vision and I'll tell you how we have worked since 2013 to make it happen. And I'm very happy today to share with you Kids Save Life project. I'm one of project leader with Professor Ben Bottinger. I am a young father one. He is a really master Jedi on Kids Save Life. What, what is uh, Kids Save Life? As you know, it's a uh, uh, a worldwide campaign developed by Bern Bottingen, the, the, the man with the red balloon on the left, uh, supported by ICOR, ERC, and other international society, and endorsed by WHO. Uh, I hope everybody knows Kids Have Life Statement, but just in case, if not, please have a look to ERC position statement uh, on school children education in CPR that we published in 2016. So congratulations to Kids Save Life Brazil, congratulations to Naomi. This is an amazing example of international collaboration. Thank you very much for all this effort to share Kids Save Life campaign there in Brazil. We are very love it. We published several articles about Kids Save Life campaign in Europe from 2018. We built a map and recently we update this map for the next guideline. Uh, the map slowly become red and pink, and we are very proud of it. So, back in time again, one of the milestones in Europe about uh, awareness and CPR school training was the Declaration of the European Parliament in 2012. From 2013, we started to organize Caracast Awareness during the European Startup Day. This was uh, my little boy during the European Startup 2013. We worked as IRC since 2013 on cardiac arrest awareness with education, kids, and school children. This was Italy in 2013, 2014 in, uh, in the schools, in the public place, and 2015. From 2015, we jumped on Kids Save Life project, we trained in 2015 during Expo 5,000 students in BLS in Milan. And during the 2015, during the European Startup Day, we released a lot of materials for Kids Save Life campaign in school in Italy. This is, for example, training material for primary school with the characters of a great taking technique. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll tell you after about this project. And this is training material for secondary school. Again, a poster for primary school about uh, the characters of great technique. And this is a poster for secondary school. All these things for free, all these things are available on the website during the uh, um, all. Uh, European Research Day in Italy. In 2016, we organized another mass training during IRC Congress in Milan called Kids Save Life. We trained another 2,500 students of secondary school in the US. And between 2016 and 2017, we launched a survey on school.net, a big website dedicated to school children in Italy. And we collect response from 9,500 students about the behavior. And you can find our resuscitation and on the website. Uh, this is a very nice infographic that uh, describes the behavior of the students uh, in relation to cardiac arrest. In 2016, 
we released during European Startup Day a breathtaking picnic that became European with the support of German Resuscitation Council and Belgian Resuscitation Council. Uh, basically, it is a tale for kids between 6 and 10 and the game with uh, information for relatives about cardiac arrest and shocking. I'll show you a very brief video. Good morning, sleepy kids. You know what day it is today? Come on, get up. Spring picnic is just a few hours. There's still so much to do. Luckily, some folks are already hard at work. At the squirrel's house, everyone is busy. Mommy and Daddy are preparing a tasty nut cake, and the two youngsters are quarreling as usual. Fine, shouts Plom, tight clutching the nut that Pop Pop is trying to pinch from her. Rather than letting her brother take it, she wolfs it down. Pop. Uh oh. Uh oh. So, you know, uh, Italy is a crazy, beautiful country, and for this reason, we produce an app, but also we printed a book. And obviously, in the respect of different learning style, we use for different purposes. Uh, for example, we use the app and the book with training materials uh, uh, play with kids and inform relatives about cardiac arrest awareness. And this, for example, is a, an event on a kindergarten during a Viva Week, our cardiac arrest awareness. Uh, this is my son, and this is a nice uh, example of collaboration during uh, cardiac arrest training. In 2017, we launched the Tum Tum uh, Totem from Breathtaking Picnic, and we uh, distributed the Totem in several pediatric hospitals in Italy. In 2015, we released the final version of Relieve, always during European Startup Day. Relieve is a free sci fi adventure game about CPR. You can download for free from the Team Store, and it is a, a very nice game about CPR and on Mars, and it's very challenging for, for the kids. So, regarding Relieve, we published our data on resuscitation about uh, kids training with the use of this serious game. This is a study design. We asked to 65 students to participate voluntarily uh, to a session of two minutes of chest compression only without any previous training. After that, uh, um, we asked it after three, four months uh, to participate to another session of two minutes with chest compression only with feedback in real time from relief on chest compression rate and that. At, at the end of month eight, we ask it again to participate in another session of two minutes without feedback to measure retention. So this is the population and, and points. In the table, you can read the results. Baseline versus competition, they improve because they receive feedback. But with our surprise, they remember after single experience Three months later, something about chest compression rate and depth. This is a summary result baseline with the competition, in, they increase the chest compression rate and depth. They, they remember after three months uh, in retention phase. So these were our conclusion relieve improves significantly awareness in terms of knowledge of cardiac arrest and chest compression skills in a group of school children without any previous experience in CPR. Relief was also able to improve retention knowledge and was able to ensure retention of chest compression depth skill at three months after only one session of competition. Back in time again, back to the future, European Restart Art Day, 60 October 2017, another campaign. We produce a Live Long and Prosper campaign and we produce a nice video and I'll show you. Welcome to the International Cosplayers' Fair. We remind for 
participants that registration is open to try the new galactic particle that it is prohibited to smoke and teleport without the prior permission of the administration. In case of a cardiac arrest, we are to follow these instructions. If the person is unconscious, gently shake his shoulders and ask loudly, are you If the person is not responsive, gently tilt his, her head back and lift his, her chin. Look at the victim's chest to check whether he, she is breathing normally. This should require no more than 10 seconds. If the person is unresponsive and is not breathing normally, ask the helper to call the emergency service. Or perhaps it's best if you call the service. <laughs> Follow the given by the dispatch operator, possibly function on your phone. Ask anyone near you to a real defibrillator. In the meantime, for resuscitation, seek far. Hail beside the person, hands one on top of the other in the center of the victim's chest. Arms straight, press on the lower half of the sternum deeply and rapidly, the rate of about twice per second, and without stopping. Allow the chest to recoil completely without removing your hand. If a defibrillator is available, have someone switch it on while you press on the chest. Follow the instructions the defibrillator will provide to you. Remember to stop chest compressions only if indicated. that everyone will live long and prosper. In case of a cardiac risk, Dedicated to Lennon, Nimoy, Mr. Spock. So, back to the future again. I had a dream ten, ten years ago. Uh, everybody knows that some things are simply impossible until somebody who doesn't know that makes them possible. This is my Captain Log Part 2. I'll talk about history of virtual reality, taxonomy, and virtual versus augmented reality and future of VR and AR. And virtual reality on PubMed and we are CPR Italian Registration Council. So the term virtual reality was uh, this is a, a definition. Uh, you can find several definitions. This is one of that. And the term uh, virtual reality was coined by Yarun Larnier in 1987 during uh, a period of intense research activity, a very eclectic American guy. And this is Virtual reality history timeline. You can find a lot of timeline on Google. Virtual reality is a very generic term. Uh, it is useful to underline uh, a clear taxonomy about VR. Augmented reality is an integration of digital information with the user environment in real time. Instead, virtual reality is a computer technology that use virtual reality at set, sometimes in combination with physical uh, spaces or multi-projectile environment to generate a realistic image, sounds, and other sensation that stimulate uh, a user physical presence in a virtual or imaginary environment. I'll show you some example from Star Wars, This is a nice game from Lenovo in 2017 about Star Wars with the use of augmented reality.
And this is a, another example uh, of virtual reality. It's totally different. You are totally immersed in, in, a, in a virtual world. Millions of uh, uh, headsets sell all over the world from Samsung, Oculus, HTC, and Sony. You can find on Amazon everywhere you can buy a uh, headset. And uh, area of interest of virtual reality and uh, augmented reality recently uh, are healthcare, engineering, and education. So if you put virtual reality on PubMed uh, regarding science, if you search only virtual reality, you can find a lot of articles. And for example, a lot of publication, but unfortunately, a few regarding resuscitation, cardiac arrest and CPR. This time, there are some surgeons in the audience, uh, surgeon orthopedics. This time you win the match because a lot of publication on VR, if you can see a lot of thousand and thousand, I have a fracture, I need to fix it. So motion, uh, Marion Leary from uh, US, for example, published two years ago, a nice research about the use of VR. We met together some days ago, some years ago in, uh, in Chicago, and uh, she published the behavior by standard in virtual reality in relation to the gender of the victim. Very nice experience. Some example of project of virtual reality all over the world with the use of, of for example, of Google uh, Cardboard. And this is very nice from Resuscitation Council UK, Last Saber VR, very cool. You can download directly on your um, iPhone or Android. And we asked in 2018 some opinion to K person all over the country in Europe about VR uh, to educator, to instructor, a member of the ERC Research Net. We have a lot of be, uh, a believer because we asked them, do you believe virtual reality could play a role in the future of training? And they said, absolutely yes, in the 73% of cases. And we asked, do you believe virtual reality could work better with some target group? And they respond, kids, why not a care professional, general population, instructor, uh, a lot of very nice target group for us. So again, Back in time, we published it in 2009, a long time ago, in a galaxy far away, our experience in VR, CPR. The aim of this project was to use VR as uh, self dilated learning in operating theater. It was 2009, the, the graphic was horrible. I'll show you some very old fashioned video about that. very horrible graphics for that time. So, after exactly 10 years, what's next? At the end of our story, we put all together our experience in virtual reality CPR. The aim of this project is to use VR as a self direct learning station for BLS and AD. Our two target group our general population and kids and healthcare professional with different approach, obviously. And we receive a, a founding. We are very grateful to the sponsor of this project. We very proud to receive international and national support from Philip Zoll and Physiocontrol Striker and from a foundation of Bologna. And I'm very happy to share this project with my fellowship, the Lord of the Rings, my dear friend Giuseppe is Frodo. Andrea is Aragon and myself is Legolas. And we share this project with a real developer. They develop games for us and they develop virtual reality. Different devices for different purposes. This is a Vive 
the RCPR ATC Vive for Training Center, very full equipped with uh, all sensor headset and 3D sound. You can use the same platform directly at home and you can learn directly at home uh, through virtual reality CPR uh, software. And also we also developed for Oculus Go, uh, dedicated to, ki uh, to the kids, very light, very easy to, to use and very cheap. So we built three scenarios out of all hospital cardiac arrest scenario, chest compression only procedure, nice location, Santo Stefano Square in Bologna. In hospital adult cardiac arrest scenario, traditional BLS, full CPR, chest compression and ventilation, and out of hospital pediatric cardiac arrest scenario for pediatric uh, BLS. We rebuilt in this virtual reality uh, scenario three different virtual AD from Philips Zoll and PhysioControl. And for the character's environment, we use a, a real person and we use a photogrammetry techniques that reproduce the real things in virtual reality uh, environment. This is uh, the photogrammetry of uh, Santos Square um, in Bologna. And we use, for example, real person, this is Cinzia from IRC uh, office, uh, and she became nurse in an hospital scenario. And as in Blade Runner, we create a virtual replica. I was the patient in, in hospital cardiac arrest scenario. And this is a very nice story. This is a teacher of a pediatric scenario. Uh, she's a doctor and she's a cardiac arrest survivor after a terrible septic shock. She totally recovered and she gave us his avatar for this project. We are very happy for that. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the teacher. All the replicants of VR, CPR are real and they become actors in our uh, virtual reality project. We tested VR, CPR during uh, development in real life. Uh, we was uh, invited by Red Cross in Paris and we used, for example, in during the World Startup Day in Rome. And we tested also in, uh, with medical students indoor. In this case, we compare VRCPR versus standard reference, a mannequin. And we collect data uh, about uh, chest compression rate and depth, with, uh, and we compare with the blood Altman plot, and we compare chest compression depth and rate in 43 students uh, during 120 seconds of chest compression only CPR. And the results were very interesting because the difference was were only 1.4 in terms of chest compression rate and only 3.7 millimeters in terms of chest compression depth. We develop also a VR BLS courses in Italy. This is a nice photo. Uh, we launched two pilot uh, courses for layperson and for healthcare professional and we use Oculus Go and we use ATC Vive for skills. Unfortunately, during our journey, we arrived in 2020, COVID-19, coronavirus disease, 2018. My last captain logs part three. I'll talk about COVID-19, basic life support, kids save life and future plans. Memory from the past. The first cases from China in 31 December 2019 reported from Wuhan. 24 of January, first European cases. Unfortunately, on 22 of February, the first case in Italy. And nothing from that time has been the same. DRC on 228 on two of February published an alert on the ERC website. 7th of March, IRC released 
Italian guideline about CPR. 8th of March, with uh, Teresa Oleswagen and Giuseppe Ristagno, we published a letter to editor about first responder and the fear of first responder to start CPR in a COVID-19 area. And the same day in Italy, we started lockdown. This was my last photo outside with my family. 11 of March, WHO declared pandemia all over the world. 20 of March was described, we described the first wave in Bologna. We received a lot of calls, management from our dispatch center was uh, very hard because we received 300 and two, 3,003 and 200 calls. On average, we receive per day 100 and 1,100 calls. We spent a lot of time fighting uh, in ICU, but we spent a lot of time, not easy, uh, to manage the call in dispatch center. And we opened several ICU in my hospital and all over the country. And yes, we spent a lot of time there fighting against uh, COVID-19. 30 of March in 2020, ILCO released a systematic review about COVID-19 and CPR. And on website, uh, 10 of April, ILCO released a practical guidance for implementation. You can find a lot of Resources on our website on the European Resuscitation Council, and we release also video about experts on the field. And after that, we also release an open e-learning about COVID-19 guidelines, and we also publish a pathway to resuming ARC courses after the peak level of the COVID-19 pandemic. And I'll show you briefly the BLS for lay lecture uh, based on ILCOR and uh, ERC evidence, and we published that in the ERC guideline. Regarding uh, recognition of cardiac arrest, very important. Check response with shaking and shouting, and check breathing only visually. Don't open the highway. This is a big difference in comparison to the past. You can choose uh, to shaking the upper part of the body as in the UK or the lower part of the body as in Italy is the same. Regarding recognition, again, call the dispatch center and please state COVID-19 status. Very important for EMS to know about that. Cover the victim nose and mouth with a surgical mask or a cloth, and if available, also wear on your own a mask because you have to protect yourself. After that, touch chest compression and wait for AD. Chest compression as usual, chest compression rate between 100 and 120, and chest compression depth between 5 and 6 centimeters. So at the end, wash your hand and contact local authorities to receive support after the contact with the potential victim of COVID-19. Regarding Kids Save Life, we published in June a call to action for international communities. All the communities must overcome the fear of COVID-19 to help kids to learn to save life. I think uh, kids learn much better than adults the new rules of the game for CPR training in the COVID-19 area. For the future, two projects, new uh, early warning score, Track and trigger the deterioration of the patient directly at home as a tricorder, collect data at home and measure the, the news, the new early warning score directly at home to find the deterioration of patient. Another very innovative and challenging project from Cambridge, recognize COVID-19 patient with an app. This is a very interesting project. They are collecting data from the citizen, voluntary based, add them to increase the number of samples. They collect voice, breathing, and cough through an app. So finally, the first 
virtual ERC Congress next 22 of October. We are very happy to organize a virtual Congress about the new guideline. We will present the new guidelines open for the public comments about BLS and uh, about system saving life and other things. Take a message. Please support again Kids Save Life and World Saturday Day during the next week. Amazing, amazing effort in Brazil. We are very proud of it. Teach and learn CPR as soon as possible. As Peter Safar laws, if you can't win, change the rules. If you can change the rules, then ignore them. And when in doubt, think. And think different. Think outside the, the box. Do not conform. And may the force be with you. But keep the distance, we must. Thank you very much indeed. Sorry, no? I was, uh, thank you very much. It was an excellent presentation, very updated, very nice data and information. Thank you very much. Uh, Federico, may I ask you one thing? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do you, what, what do you think about the near future picture for lay people learning CPR uh, in this periods of pandemia, also second wave, first wave, depends on the country. Uh, for lay people learning CPR and becoming rescuers. Yeah, thank you for, this is a very challenging question, you know, because this is a very, not easy to transform traditional training way. I, uh, I have a conflict of interest, you know, I am a geek. I think for the future, we need to use virtual reality. We, we need to use e-learning. We need to use uh, exactly as now, uh, video camera, microphone. We can teach and learn directly from Italy to Brazil and Brazil to Italy uh, with a cam, with, a, with an app. So I think the future is absolutely here. We have the technology, we have the, the network. So. I think we need to use only one hashtag flexibility. We need to be absolutely flexible. We need to remove some rules. We need to be very innovative. And for the future, I think we need to uh, teach to the kids the new way about COVID-19 area because they are amazing. They are a sponge, you know. They are much better than adults. They wash their hands, they wear a mask, they are not absolutely uh, uh, in problem to manage social distancing. So I think the future is there. We need to teach the kids to live in a new wave for the next year. I hope only one or two years, but we need to think about it. Um... Thank you, Federico. Uh, please, may I uh, make another question? Yep. Uh, about the um, adverse events or complications or some health problems that uh, people cannot use uh, virtual reality. Uh, what you can say about that? What persons cannot use that? Yes, very nice question. Commonly, as uh, for example, the traditional game, uh, the platform, uh, there is some concern about, for example, uh, the patient with seizure. So virtual reality and video games uh, are not forbidden, but uh, you have to be aware with the seizure play, uh, patient because uh, the virtual reality and, and video games overall can in some way increase the risk of seizure, but nothing else because it's easy to use. It's absolutely at the moment cheaper because in comparison to 10 years ago, uh, a traditional headset costs around less than iPhone, I can say, 
200, 300. So it's much easier to, to buy a headset than a, a, a mobile phone now. And I think the only contraindication, yes, is seizure. Uh, another point, I saw one person um, flexing uh, her elbows. So uh, can this technology help to, to see these uh, wrong procedures or maneuvers and correct them? Yes, absolutely. During our research in the next, in the, in the last five years, uh, we use uh, several devices to recognize uh, the, the hands, the movements of the arms. So you can track everything now with the cam. For example, in the, in the new Oculus, you can use your hands as a controller. So absolutely, you can use this technology to correct the position of the arms, to, for example, co correct the position of a teaching lift. Absolutely, now you can. So it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it I will try to use it and uh, please be in touch to Absolutely. help us to improve this here in Brazil. And I would like to thank you again very, very much. Very nice uh, presentation. Thank you for kind invitation. It, uh, it is a real pleasure to share this hour with you. Uh, it's like a uh, it's not real Brazil, but it seems like a real Brazil. <laughs> when we can have you here, uh, for sure, we will try to invite you to come here. I hope soon depends on COVID-19, you know, depends only uh, to the bastard COVID-19. Uh, I don't know when, but <laughs> I hope soon. I, I hope for the, the entire community worldwide uh, I, I hope soon as possible. So thank you. Thank you very much, Federico. See you soon. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Bye bye.